What's up YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about is it too late for you to start investing if you're 40 or close to 40 and have nothing saved for retirement or very little or not as much as you believe that you should have. This is a question I get often from clients, students, and of course, a ton of people on social media. And without spoiling the video just yet, the answer to that question is probably not. But I wanna walk through exactly why now might be the best time for you to start investing, as well as what you need to be focusing on right now to ensure your success in the future if you are getting a little bit of a, a later start to your investing. Quick intro before we dive in. My name is Jose Hernandez. I run a financial education company that serves first generation wealth builders, people like you and me, people the first person in their family to think about investing seriously. And over the years, I've been blessed enough to help thousands of first generation wealth builders master investing, get on track with their goal of financial freedom and or building generational wealth for their family. Started my career in the financial industry as a wealth management advisor, where I earned a series seven and 66 licenses, worked with wealthy individuals and learned everything that I now know that I've been sharing on the internet across social media for years now. So uh, let's dive into today's topic. Like I mentioned, is 40 too late to start investing? We're gonna cover three sections primarily in our conversation today. Number one, we're gonna talk about why your 40s can actually be the best time to start investing. I know you see the, the social media posts about if you start investing when you're 18 and putting away $200 or whatever, you'd have you know, a margarita on the beach right now, but we're gonna talk about why now can still be a great time. And I'm gonna show you some proof as well in section two, why you still can succeed, even if you are close to 40 or past your 40s and have very little to nothing saved. And lastly, we're gonna wrap it up with what to focus on most to ensure your success. There's some really important things to be focusing on at this stage of your life, at this stage of your investing journey, and we're gonna walk through those together. So section one is why now is actually the best time for you to start investing and why now is the best time for you to start taking this seriously before we get into the numbers and start talking about specifics. So I want you to think about where you're at right now in both your life, career and or business compared to like when you were 18 or 21, like a lot of the posts on social media, you know, show you those little posts that tell you if you invested, you know, $200 per month or whatever, this is where you'd be at right now. Well, here's the thing. There's a very good chance that if you are approaching 40 or 40 plus, you're probably earning a higher income now compared to when you were just getting started, when you're just out of school, or maybe if you didn't go to school, when you first started working or started your business, there's a very good chance that over the past two decades, you've been able to increase your earning power. And why is that important? Well, one of the most important things as we'll talk about towards the end of the video to start building your wealth, <clears throat> excuse me, and start growing your portfolio and start getting closer to that goal of financial freedom is your ability to put money away to invest it regularly and build what's called your portfolio's principle, which is basically just like the value of your investments, because that's what, that's going to be one of the biggest determinants of how much your money can compound over time is how much you're funding your accounts. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because there's a good chance that you now have extra cash flow compared to when you're 18 or 21 to start investing. And, you know, maybe it was a case in your situation when you were 18 or 21. I know this was a case for me that investing, for example, $500 a month wasn't really feasible, but maybe that's no longer the case for you. Going hand in hand with that, there's probably a good chance too that you've made a lot of progress significantly in either your career or business if you're a business owner, and maybe you're on a much better trajectory in terms of increasing your income consistently from here compared to when you're just getting started, just figuring it out. So even though you might not have the investments to show for it just yet, like I mentioned a second ago, one of the most important things for you to start growing your wealth is simply just putting money to work. And there's a good chance that you now have more money to put put away and put to work compared to when you were much younger and first getting started. And that's by far one of the best ways to make up for lost ground or lost time is to focus on consistently building up that portfolio's principle. And you'd be shocked at how much ground you can cover just by doing that one simple thing. And if anything, from a mental perspective, because a lot of this does come back to mindset, you now really do have a real reason to start taking investing seriously because you know time is of the essence. You're getting older, you're not getting any younger. When you're 18, 21, 25 or whatever, you, know, you still have all this time to figure it out and investing probably didn't feel as much of a priority because like I said, you had time to quote unquote figure it out. But now it's actually, it's game time. It's time to start taking this seriously. And now you have a real sense of urgency. So combining the fact that maybe 
hopefully you're making more money now compared to when you're 18 or 21. You're on a much better tra trajectory with your career and or business. And you now have a real sense of urgency as to why you should be taking action. All these variables line up to show that in a lot of cases, your 40s can actually be one of the best times to start investing because there's a real reason to take it seriously and you have the means to do so. So that's section one. Now I want to show you some numbers because I want to make this a lot more real for you. It's one thing for me to tell you it's achievable. It's another thing to actually show you how and why. So let's talk about uh, why it can still be worth it for you to start investing if you're 40 or approaching 40 or in your 40s, even if you have zero saved for retirement or not as much as you feel like you should have. Before we look at the numbers, let's look at some statistics, uh, some statistics, some averages. So, you know, the numbers that I'm showing you, I'm not just pulling out of a hat. So here we're looking at the median earnings or income by age in the United States. And you'll see that for people that are from 35 to 44, the annual median wage is around $63,596. So we're going to be using medians uh, for our examples here. You might be making a lot more than that. You might be making a lot less than that. I don't know your specific situation, but we're going to use the median because that usually lines up with where a lot of people are. And as far as some of the assumptions that we're going to be making around returns, we're going to look at what the average stock market return has been over the past almost century, 100 years, which has been around 10%. Of course, there's years where the market's up more than that. There's years where it's down more than that. But this is an extremely long-term average, and it can make sense for our projection. So now that we have the basics out of the way, let's actually start looking at the, uh, the actual uh, numbers. So this is a very helpful calculator that I share with a lot of clients and students that uh, are in a situation where you're at right now where you know you you know you need to get on the ball with your investing and play some catch up. So why I like this calculator is because it accounts for the impact of you increasing your contributions, or in other words, consistently increasing how much you're putting away into your investment accounts. And as we'll talk about towards the end of this video, this is this is one of the most powerful things you can do to start playing catch up and make up for lost ground and, and lost time. So for our assumption, we're going to assume that you're making around that average that we just talked about or median income in your 40s. You're actually four years old in this specific scenario. We're going to assume that you start off contributing 10% of your salary to your employer's 401k plan. This we're going to use a 401k for this example. By no means is a 401k the only type of account that you can leverage, but we're just going to assume that for the sake of simplicity. And then we're going to assume that you're increasing your contributions to that 401k by 3% every single year until you hit the cap of 25% of your income. And then as far as your gross pay, we're gonna assume that bi-weekly, twice a month, you are earning gross $2,666, which again is very in line with the median income ranges that we're looking at a second ago for people that are in their 40s. And we're gonna assume that your, in your income increases by 3%, more or less just like a cost of living uh, inflation adjustment. So again, this goes back to what I talked about earlier. If you're in a situation where you are increasing your income significantly because of the progress that you've made in your career, that only helps you. Uh, I don't know if I already said it or not, but we're assuming that you're starting from zero in this analysis. So you're starting literally from scratch, from square, square one. Like I said, we're assuming you're 40 years old right now, and we're gonna assume that the retirement age is 60. You can push this back to 65, you can push it up, push it back. We're just using this as a baseline because with retirement accounts in particular, age 59 and a half is when you can start accessing generally the money in that account without worrying about the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So essentially we have 20 years of runway here. We have 20 years to make up for the time that we weren't investing in our 20s and 30s, and we can focus on consistently building our portfolio from here. Uh, and like I said, starting from scratch, and you'll see that we are assuming the average annual rate of return of what the stock market's done over the past century or so. So let's take a look at the results. I want to say again, you start from scratch here, and this is just because you are forcing yourself to automatically invest consistently. Every time you get paid, you paid yourself first, by far one of the most powerful habits you can develop, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, that is by far one of the most important things you can be doing right now to accelerate the, the wealth creation that you're looking to achieve. So in this scenario, you'll see that there's two different numbers. There's two different lines. There's the green line, and then there's a the blue line. So one of the most important parts of this analysis is the fact that we were assuming the annual increase in contributions of 3%. In other words, every single year, you were increasing how much you were adding to your 401k, to your portfolio by 3% 
while making sure that you're investing and reinvesting dividends and things of that nature. So by doing that alone and just being consistent over this time period, even though you were able to, even though you started from scratch, that is, you were still able to build over $1 million in wealth inside of that account. Again, even though you were starting from zero, the blue line represents uh, what you would have built if you weren't focusing on increasing those contributions consistently by the 3%. So in that scenario, you would have only had $472,913 saved at age 60. So one thing I did uh, leave out that's really important as a part of this analysis as well is we're not assuming any employer 401k matching. So of course, if there was a match that would only help the cause here, but I want to keep this pretty baseline, pretty bare bones, just so we're using some basic numbers for you to be able to understand and take a look at. So again, you're able to build over the $1 million in investable assets and wealth over this time period, even though you were starting from scratch, simply because you made it a priority to start investing regularly. You made it a priority to increase how much you were investing into your retirement account. And you were, like I said, just consistent all the way through. So those are some numbers for you to look at. Whether 1 million is enough or not for you, of course, depends on a number of things. But I don't know about you. I'd rather have a million over nothing at that age. So uh, those are the numbers. Now, let's, let's dive into the keys to your success. So we've talked about why now is the best time to start investing, even if you're off to a later start. We've shown you some numbers, just some basic numbers as to how you can still be successful even if you are starting from scratch. Now let's go over your keys to success. This is the conversation I have often with tons of clients and students that are in your situation that's approaching 40 or 40 plus. You feel behind the ball. You feel that anxiety of like, am I going to have to work forever? Uh, let's talk about what you have to focus on right now in order to eliminate those anxieties, eliminate those fears, and most important of all, achieve success. So number one, let's start off with the fact that a lot of this comes back to mindset. I know it's cliche, but with investing, with money, with your life, mindset determines basically everything. And I see a lot of people get hung up on and caught up on the fact of, man, you know, I should have started investing when I was 21, when I got my first job, or I shouldn't have cashed out my 401k when I was X years old, or all these different things, right? But the past is the past. We have no control over what happened in the past because it's it's gone. We had control over it at that point in time, but we either didn't take action or we took a different direction. It is what it is. You continuing to be caught up on what happened or didn't happen 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years ago is not going to help your cause. What is going to help your cause is focusing on the things that you can control now, namely making investing a priority namely uh, taking your investing seriously, having a real sense of urgency about it, educating yourself so you actually know what you're doing and, and taking consistent action. So speaking of action, if you're asking me what's the most important thing that I can be doing right now if I am 40 or older and I need to get on the ball, by far the most important thing you can be doing right now is making funding your investment accounts a priority. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking, you know, you just need to make a one-time investment and try to flip that into a million dollars. And realistically, that's just not how it works. That's not reality. The odds of you doing that are significantly low, close to zero. Whereas if you take the consistent approach, yes, it's boring. Yes, it takes some time. But if you take the consistent approach and focus on funding your investment accounts regularly, focus on following a sound investment uh, plan, a sound investment strategy, your odds of success are significantly higher. Here, we're briefly looking at a uh, visual that I share with a lot of clients and students. And there's three primary stages of your journey, if you will, as an investor. You have the accumulation stage, which is where you're kind of building your wealth from scratch. And that's really the phase that you're probably in right now. If you are starting from scratch or don't have as much saved or invested as, as, as you wish you had at this stage in your 40s or after. And the number one determinant of your success in this specific stage or phase of your investing journey is again, how consistent you are in funding your accounts and making that sure that money is invested properly so you can really start building that snowball effect inside of your portfolio of compounding, right? You'll never get that compound effect if you don't focus on consistently building your portfolio's base, if you will, or building up the, the value, initial value of your portfolio. So you don't have to do it all overnight. You don't need a million dollars to get started. You can start off with whatever amount makes sense for you, but you're never going to make progress if you don't make this a top priority. That is funding your accounts regularly, setting up the proper systems in your finances to where at least once a month or every time you get paid, however you want to set up, 
part of the money that you're making is being put into assets. It's being put to work. It's being invested. It's being put into things that can grow in value, compound, pay you. And that's really where all of this starts. Now, we also need to talk about the fact that time is of the essence. You need to be taking action now because the further you that you delay this process, the less you're going to be able to, to take advantage of time. And time is by far one of the most important variables in that compound interest, in that money snowball, if you will, uh, scenario. So, you know, we're, we're at where we're at for whatever reason, but if we continue to delay that process, we're only continuing to shoot us in, shoot ourselves in the foot. As you probably know by now, you're not getting any younger. Time is of the essence. I'm not trying to freak you out. I'm not trying to give you extra anxiety that you already feel right now. But what I am saying is this has to be a top priority. If you're serious about reaching that goal of financial independence by a age it's still where you can still enjoy your life now is the time to start taking action like we saw in the analysis increasing contributions is key this is by far one of the biggest wealth hacks if you will to make up for lost time if you are feeling behind the ball with your investing and that all comes back to cash flow planning and making sure that you have a strong budget in place that allows you to do that and also focusing on your career your business and increasing your income consistently this is a big one that so many people miss out on but i also strongly believe at this stage of your life financial planning is a must right it's one thing to rely on rules of thumb it's one thing to you know rely on all sorts of other rules of thumb out there like just try to invest five or ten percent of your income those things are okay if you're just getting started maybe you're 18 maybe you're 21 and you're just trying to get started with investing that's fine but like i mentioned time is of the essence now you don't have as much time as you had when you were 21 or 25 or 18 or whatever and the purpose of a financial plan like i describe to people all the time is it's really like a, a gps for your finances for your investments so if you think about it when you are investing without a plan it's kind of like you getting into a car and you're just driving and driving and driving driving but you have no clue where you're going you're going to end up somewhere but it's probably not going to be where you actually wanted to go whereas if you took some time before you turned on the car to set your gps again the gps being a analogy for your financial plan that GPS is going to tell you exactly what roads you need to get on, what turns you need to make, how long it's going to take you to get there, if you get off course, how to get back on track. So similarly, a true financial plan is going to help you understand how much wealth do I really realistically need to build over the next several years of my life? How much do I need to be investing to be on track? What do my investments need to look like? What types of accounts do I need to be funding? How do I manage taxes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully you're seeing how that's much different compared to, you know, just VOO and chill and try to invest 5% of your income, which again, there's nothing wrong with that in particular if you're just getting started. But if you're older now, now is game time. Now it's time to be much more serious about your approach and start figuring this stuff out now. So financial planning is a must. And then lastly, this is what I'll leave you with is your 40s are a great time to start building Building momentum with your investing. So we looked at that chart just one second ago about the three stages of your investing journey. That first stage is all about building momentum, building that portfolio principle up. And you know, 10 years is a more than reasonable time amount of time to, to do so. Uh, because once you hit 50, you really want to start cooking. You know, you really want to be moving fast because once you hit 50, there's a lot of benefits to investors, specifically in retirement accounts. There's things called catch-up contributions, which allow you to add even more money above and beyond the regular limit to your investment accounts, your retirement accounts, that is. So for example, currently, if you're 50 plus, you can invest $30,500 into a 401k compared to the standard $23,000. You can put in uh, an additional $1,000 into an IRA, whether that's a traditional IRA or Roth IRA. So you can put up to $8,000 compared to the $7,000 uh, that you would normally be able to put in if you're under 50 into an IRA. So those are some examples of what I'm talking about. But really, you want to use your 40s as the runway to really start picking up momentum, really start building up speed, if you will, with the creation of your wealth. That way, your 50s are an opportunity to just kick it into over drive and really, really start to really, truly uh, reap the benefits of compounding in your investing and get closer to whatever goal you have in terms of financial freedom, generational wealth, or anything in between. So in a nutshell, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you are currently feeling like you're behind the ball with your investing or you have no clue where to get started, or maybe you've been investing, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe, maybe you've been investing for years now and you're just not sure if you're on track and need some guidance, need some help, 
as you can hopefully tell by now, I do this all day, every day with people just like you. And I'm more than happy to schedule a time for us to meet to see what questions you have and see how I can help you on your journey. There is a link for you to schedule one on one with me. You'll see that in the description to uh, the video at the bottom. So just click the link for us to schedule a time for us to meet and we can take it from there. But hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.